They've teased us, hyped it up, made us wait almost two years, but it's finally here, the War Horse! So how many of you knew back in 2008 when Kicker introduced the War Horse 10,000 watt amp that they actually had plans to make a 5,000 watt version called the War Pony. Thanks to Kip at Kicker, he told us this story in a Facebook post and I thought it was interesting that now in 2024, we actually have the War Pony, AKA War Horse 3600. It's not difficult to understand with a $10,000 amp in 2008 why they didn't sell a ton of them, while the new version at $1,099 seems to be a much more compelling price point. As I mentioned earlier, Kicker has teased us with the War Horse amps way back to 2022 at SEMA, where they showed off nine Kicker Solo X subwoofers along with nine of the Warhorse 3600.1 amplifiers. And yes, it plays under 40 Hertz. <laughs> We've also been teased the full range model, such as the Warhorse 1000.4, which hopefully will be out soon. And we'll be able to check this amplifier out, 250 watts by four at four ohms, the WXA 1000.4. But today, we are focusing on the War Pony, AKA War Horse WXA 3600.1, the resurgence of the monoblock War Horse amplifier in 2024, slated to hit shelves in June of 2024. First here out of the box, we see a 3.5 millimeter connector. What could this be for? Well, it's for the base knob. The remote base knob is metal with a clicky wheel, which feels very good for the volume but it also has something special here. It has a little tab in the back. You know how I sometimes complain about 3.5 millimeters pulling out. This one, all you have to do, slide over the little metal tab, your 3.5 millimeter is not coming out. Very smart move, Kicker, to incorporate this in the base knob. Next up, we have another cable in the box. What could this be for? Looks like a computer network cable for Cat5, Cat6, but no. This goes to the remote diagnostic display which displays diagnostics remotely. Amazing, right? <laughs> Let's find out more about this, but first we'll show you how to plug it in because this is like a Glade. You got to plug it in, plug it in. Snap, this is not coming out. What does this display? Well, it displays the voltage, lets you know if the amp is in protect or not. Temperature of the amp based on the color of an LED, power supply, power LED. But guess what it doesn't include? Whoops, doesn't have a clip indicator. This is not a Mickey Mouse program. Magnetic mounts are provided here for the remote base knob and the diagnostic display, which is very slick, makes mounting them very simple. We also have four huge mounting screws and two what the hex wrenches to include with tightening down your terminals and such. Also, we have some very small screws for mounting those remote base knobs and remote diagnostic. We also have a certified power sheet 4,613 watts is what it says. This amp is a 3,600.1, so that's 1,000 watts over the rated power. We're going to see how close we get when we do the amp dyno test later in the video. PSA, don't eat the silica gel packet. Put it in your toolbox. And here we have the War Horse WXA 3,600.1 amplifier. Right off the bat, very slick design. It is completely aluminum. Those end caps are aluminum, they're not plastic. And we have laser etching here for the WXA 3600.1. Also for the War Horse, has a really cool badge on it. We're gonna do a fly over here so you can see the amplifier. It looks really cool in person. Not sure how the video shows up, but let's take a look at one end of the amp here. There's a lot going on. Tiffany style inputs and outputs for RCAs, gain control, low pass frequency, Subsonic button, diagnostic there for your remote diagnostic, power and protect LEDs, input level control, competition mode, DC turn on, and then the remote base connection. We also have double four gauge speaker outputs, even though this is a monoblock amp for hooking up dual voice coil subwoofers and such. Now we're gonna talk about the competition mode and such like that later in the video. But for now, let's switch to the other side to check out the double one alt inputs as well as you can see the tunnel fan cooling. But the way this is set up is with the minus, plus, plus, minus. 
Now, I used to complain about this, but I'm not an amplifier engineer. It is set up this way because the power supply, and Joe will talk about that later in the video when we get to the guts, but you also see there's two remote connections, one for input, one for output, and it also has a tunnel style fan cooling, which helps keep the amp nice and cool. What about dimensions? As far as the length, we have 15.4 inches for the length, 9.1 inches for the width, and the height is about 2.6 inches or 65 millimeters. As for power ratings, at 4 ohms, it's rated 1400 watts, 2 ohms, 2500 watts, 1 ohm, 3600 watts. Those are all at 14.4 volts. Kicker mentions the MSRP, $1,099. This amplifier is designed to be brutalized in SPL competition vehicles. When I test amplifiers over 1,000 watts, I typically use my lithium bank. It's 320 amp hours of yen long excess power, LTO cells, as well as a couple 100 amp variable power supplies for my testing. There is some voltage drop, but this simulates real world usage. Now Joe at Kicker will explain Kicker's test procedures. To what's called CTA 2006C testing. Um, one of those tests is 60 seconds full power. Once you're done with 60 seconds, that's what you can rate your amplifier at, both bandwidth and power, right? And so our amplifiers have to play 60 seconds full power period to a fixed load. Now my current setup doesn't allow me to run 60 seconds at full power like Kicker uses, but we will use a typical amp dyno test which run about 10 seconds. Let's fire up the amp dyno and find out what kind of power this amp puts out. If you haven't seen these tests before on the left, the power output in watts, in the middle, the ohm load, the right is the voltage of the dyno. We'll also have a remote clamp so that we can calculate the amplifier's efficiency. First up, we'll try the four ohm run. The amplifier is rated 1400 watts at 14.4. Certified test takes us up to 1% distortion coming up first. And yes, 1641 watts, although voltage is a little bit high at 14.56. So to appease you guys, we're gonna turn the voltage down and try the test again with under 14.4, and you can see we got 1537 right at 14 volts. Nice. Now let's reset up the dyno here for the uncertified test, which takes us up to the clipping point, again using the 40 hertz track. And here we go, over 1700, we get 1703 right at 14.47. Next up we'll do the dynamic run, which sends a pulse tone of 40 hertz into the amplifier to check out the dynamic capability of the amp, and right around 1700, 1712 at 14.5 volts. Let's move on to the two ohm test. The amp is rated 2500 watts at 14.4. Certified test to 1% distortion is first, 2856 at 14.39. Can't get much closer to 14.4 than that, getting several hundred watts over the rated power. Uncertified up to clipping, and yeah, we're gonna bust 3,000. <laughs> 3,025 at 14.22. Let's send that dynamic pulse track into the amp. Again, well over 3,000 watts. 3,109, 14.55 volts. Next up, we'll do the one ohm run. That's right, set the dyno up for one ohm. It's rated 3,600 watts at 14.4. We already seen the burst sheet that said 4,600. Let's try certified to 1% distortion. And we're right at 45.76 at 14.24. So we're within just a few watts of what that burst sheet said. But let's turn the voltage down some. See what it does at mid 13s. Here we go. 3,962 watts at 13.38 volts. So even if you don't have the voltage, you can still get the power out of this amp. Uncertified up to clipping. Look at this. <laughs> 49.66 at 14 volts, very nice. Dynamic is next, let's see how much dynamic power. It is rated 5,000 watts dynamically at 14.4, and we're showing 53.85 at 14 and a half volts. In the results here, I do show tests of eight ohms and also show some additional tests. Also the efficiencies, which ranged from the upper 80s to the lower 70s. We also tested 1.3 ohms and 0.8 and less. Well, if you wanna see those, you gotta to wait to the very end of the video. I'll also try one ohm test with the voltage cranked up so we can find out how much it puts out if you have a lithium bank. Now we're gonna hook up the quad box and try some flexing with this Warhorse amplifier. 
In a different video in the future, we will do some SPL testing, but for now, let's just watch those subs flex. The amp controlled the quad box really well. You hear the garage door shaking and everything else in the garage also falling off shelves. Overall, this combination sounded very nice and just for a couple grand, you can have a complete 150 dB setup from Kicker, pretty sweet. Here is the amp using the FLIR. I was having some issues with my FLIR, but I can tell you right off the bat, the amp did not get extremely hot. The fans came on when they needed to, kept the amp nice and cool. Eight screws hold the bottom panel on the amplifier. We'll take these out and we'll go ahead and open it up so you can take a closer look and see the guts of this 3600.1 Warhorse amplifier. And here it is. Lots of coils and caps, etc. You can see the power supply section. There are four transformers as well as for the rail side, 4,700 microfarad, 80 volt. All caps, there's four of those. And then for the input filtering, 4,700 microfarad, 25 volts. Again, all caps. These are 105 degrees Celsius capacitors. I believe they're made by Yuscon for Kicker. The amp is an in-house design by Kicker R&D. It is a full bridge design. It is different than the original Warhorse, which was a push-pull design amplifier, which really at that time was something unique, hasn't been seen before. Also, I wanted to show you a clip from Kicker's Unmasked Live show with Joe, the lead engineer, where he talks about the power supply design. <laughs> right down the middle of the PCB. And the reason for this is the power is on the inside and the grounds are on the outside. You'll see the ground traces are symmetrical to the, to the power supply, and the power traces are symmetrical to the power supply. So you got the symmetrical power supply design, right? So everything comes in, everything goes out. And on this side, you're looking at four individual power supplies, all set up and push-pull, wired together to make a very efficient power supply stage. If I remember right, this power supply stage is almost 92% like efficient. Again, I'll leave the link in the video description below if you want to see Joe's deep explanation of how the Warhorse works and how it compares to other full bridge amplifiers as well. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of this Warhorse 3600.1 amplifier. First up, the good stuff. Build quality is excellent. Fully aluminum, cast aluminum, and it stays nice and cool. Dual 1.0 inputs for your power. Accepts high and low level inputs up to 400 watts through the RCAs. Remote diagnostic and base level control. Dual 4 gauge speaker outputs. Subsonic 24 dB at 25 hertz. Competition mode, which allows you to use high voltage up to 17 volts. Also, low impedance capability, we'll find out about that. Now, the biggest true con for me is no clip indicator. Cannot believe they forgot that. The amp temp is via a LED color. It doesn't give you the actual temperature. Two cables for remotes, one for the diagnostic, one for the base knob. Competition mode requires greater than 4 volts of input. For example, my Pioneer ADPRS would not provide enough voltage to run this amp in the competition mode. You need a DSP or an external voltage booster for your RCA line levels. Also, it takes power to make power. I mean, it's just across the board that should be expected at this point. But understand you will need about 400 amps available to power this amp to its capacity. Speaking of powering the amp to the capacity, we will try low ohm tests in a future video. We'll also do some SPL tests as well. Find out how this thing does. I have no doubt that we'll be able to handle not only the low ohm tests, but SPL tests should be impressive. Can't wait to see. Make sure you smash me a thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe to my channel if you like this content. There's much more to come. And as always, thank you for watching. Until next time, this is Big D. I'm out of here. Let's show some additional tests for those who stick around to the end. Let's enable the competition mode on the amplifier. And of course we need to turn up the voltage because we want to see some higher voltages. In order to do this, we had to use the kicker key lock, which boosted our RCA signal from our ADPRS head unit to give us enough juice 
to feed this amplifier this RCA line level signal at very high voltage. So here we go, certified at one ohm at high voltage. What can we get? 4894, almost 4900 watts, 14.77. Let's try it to the clipping point, starting off around 14.2. Here we go. Can we get 5000? Yes, we can. 5200 watts at 14.4 volts ending up. What about dynamically? Here you can see it, high 14s, about 14.8. We're pushing right at 5,600 watts and just jumped to 5,679. Now, of course, we're gonna try 0.8 as well. Here you go, 5,100 watts at 14.18. That's certified to 1% distortion. Next up, we'll try uncertified to the clipping point. And there you go. 5,654 watts right at 13.9 volts. Finally, we'll try the dynamic run at 0.8. And here you go, mid 6,000s, 64.16 at 14.53.